Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, Vox Riffs, no more blaws or blaze. Uh, not sure how to pronounce that. Do I remember you? I'm sorry, I don't. But if you remind me, I probably will. Langors and Hilbert Curve. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, yeah, glad you could catch the stream too, Hilbert Curve. It's good to see you guys. I started a little bit later today because uh, I realized that a lot of people weren't able to make it who usually come because I was starting earlier and earlier. So, yeah. Um, but Voxeros, thank you for the comment too. I know it's not showing up in the chat on screen, but he said, gotta say the launcher is looking super polished, even if it's in the early stages. I appreciate that. Um, today we're going to be working on a little bit more with this. It's not completely done yet. Uh, I was doing some experimentation here. We're going to remove that. But uh, it's it's getting there, you know? And you kind of lost my channel. <laughs> it's all good. So I can talk a little bit about exactly, you know, um, first of all, I got to fix this too. Exactly how this is working and stuff too, because it's uh, it does quite a few things now um, to work properly. Yeah. Uh, no more blahs. You've improved a lot in Blender and Lua. Nice. Sounds pretty good. So the launcher basically is able to check if it needs an update and also install that update and update itself. But not only that, it can also update the game and add new versions and stuff. The versions aren't completely supported yet, so we might start working on that today. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff that it does. So when you first launch the launcher, it creates this file config.json. Um, and I'm thinking about creating this every single time because uh, I can just sort of scrub through your files to see where the installed versions are. The only time this might change is if I allow you to set something like a preferred installation or, or something like that. And that's something I'm wondering if I even want to do. Uh, I guess it would look more like Sumder slash dot 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 slash here. Uh, I don't know if I want to do this. I think I might just be like forceful and it's gonna go to the app data roaming uh, where I say it should be. So let me know if you guys have any qualms about that. If you're like, no, I want to choose where it gets installed to, blah blah blah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I might be pretty forceful because it'll just be easier for me to like launch the app and then look and see if this is corrupted. Uh, otherwise, it'd be hard. Well, I don't know. It's There's a lot of stuff you could do. Yeah. Um, Hilbert Curve, you like the pull-up bar in the doorway. <laughs> Thanks. It is not used ever, but maybe one day. Uh, no more blahs. Last time I saw you, it was about voxels and Perlin noise. Ah, nice. Um... And Essie Woods, hello, hello, how's it going? Good to see you, Essie Woods. So yeah, uh, let's talk a little bit about the launcher, what it does, how it works and stuff, because that is what I've been focusing on for the past couple weeks. I've had a lot of people who wanted to play it, and so I needed to create this so that you can download it. This will also be here for uh, people to sign in and stuff because if you run a multiplayer game it's easy to have somebody sign in so that you can get like user information and everything as you launch the game um so that you can actually play multiplayer and everything so that's another purpose for this i figured i could also list like commands and stuff in here and then you can sort of grab them right now you can't highlight stuff and i think that's an rml thing which is really annoying uh we're gonna see if we can fix that sometime but yeah and I see what's nice. Looks like Yo Mikester's work. It is. Yep. <laughs> uh, the new icon is neat. Thanks. Uh, the this icon is the same, or maybe you're you're talking about the logo. The logo. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate that. My brother worked on that, so he'll appreciate that too. And no more blahs. You saw a YouTube video. It's very nice. Thanks. So yeah, how does this work? Let's look at some of the things it can do real quick too. Um, one of the things it does is if it finds out that you need an update, which it does like here. Well, I guess we should just talk about the overall flow. Like what happens when you launch the launcher? <laughs> so when you launch this, the first thing it does is it sends two requests to my website. So basically it goes and um, we initialize a curl response thread, which is basically something where we can like queue up requests. Curl is supposed to be multi-threaded safe but it wasn't for me so i had to create like a whole 
like response manager thing. This basically just goes ahead and like queues up requests that you want to make to like any website, um, downloads it, then it goes ahead and it calls your callback with a response and that response has some information, uh, the data, the raw data, if you want to look at that, and then the data as JSON and if it's valid JSON, because <clears throat> you could get whatever returned, right? From a URL, you can get HTML return. So this is just if it's valid JSON, which most of my endpoints do return valid JSON. So that's nice. Um, and so then what happens is we basically go ahead and like check all that initial stuff. We say, hey, if we've got, you know, a preferred installation directory, which um, right now is just forcefully set. So I just set it to whatever the app root is, um, which is this thing here. So just like versions, that's the preferred installation directory. And then we go through and we say initialize the configuration. And this is just that config.json thing that I was showing you guys. It just has some like helper stuff in here. Um, it allows us to get the latest installed game version. It allows us to check and see if there is a preferred version. Um, so like in here, we have these installed versions, which should contain every version that the users installed onto their machine. So we get the latest one here, which you can see it's got the major and minor patch. So 0.7.3 and then the preferred version, which is the version will launch when they go to play, which is 0.7.3. So that's how it is. This should eventually grow. So you could get multiple things here and then it'll tell us the path to where that version is located. And then it'll tell us what version that is. And we can go through and sort of do whatever we want to do there. Um, so that's what this does. We can set the preferred version. So like eventually we're going to support it so that you can go into this versions tab and you can like select which version of the game you want to play. And then when you hit play game, it'll launch that one. We might change the way the UI works for that and stuff, but that's the basics of it. Uh, and then you got this add version install. So this is like, if I've installed a new version, <laughs> this goes and adds it to the configuration. I keep saying version a lot and it's because this is just all about versioning. <laughs> so that's basically what this stream is going to be about today. Um, the metadata is just like the version plus the path. Uh, so right there, we got that and that, and then we check and see if there's a preferred installation directory, which most of the time it's not. And then we return that if we do, otherwise we just return an empty string. Um, and then we can save it and free it. So that just saves the configuration file, overwrites this with whatever we put in there. Yep. Uh, as you would, if you only go, if you only go with your own launcher, won't you lose lots of potential players compared to if you utilize streams, community, steam's community? Yeah. Uh, but that's something that I'm willing to go with. I also lose 30% of a paycheck if I go with steam's community as well. So, you know, there's trade-offs with both of them. Um, I think it's definitely better to go this route because this is supposed to be a multiplayer game as well. Uh, I know Steam prop like Steam definitely has things where you can probably get like the signed in user and everything and you can do all that. But uh, this just gives me so much more flexibility in terms of that. Yeah. And you do like it. You built a great community for yourself as well. Thanks. Yeah. I'm hoping that we can sort of kickstart it and stuff with people here. The game is free and it's going to remain free for quite some time. And I'm thinking of doing like a free single player type thing. And then if you want to play multiplayer, then that's when you would pay and like buy a game. Um, Cause I feel like that's sort of just the best, but that's just something I'm tossing up. So no guarantees about that. It's just some of the things I've been thinking of. Um, let's continue and see what happens here though. So once we do that, we initialize this view manager, which is basically just like uh, gets our HTML, which looks like this. Um, this is the HTML that handles sort of just like that main screen that you see. Uh, and then it also loads in that CSS and everything, which handles all the styles for that main screen and everything. So it's basically just HTML, CSS. Uh, this launcher view also has capabilities to add toasts, which are just notifications and stuff. Um, so it initializes that and then we go ahead and we queue a task in our global thread pool to remove the old launcher files. So if you've just installed, like updated the launcher, this should remove any files that it created. Um, or like, I guess the old files. 
and then we go and we say queue update check request. So this basically is how we start checking to see if there's an update available. Um, and so basically what we do is we create this URL, which passes in the major, minor, and patch version of the current launcher, which is built into the binary. Um, how do I render H, uh, HTML on the launcher? I use RML UI, which is uh, this repository, RML UI, and this is their documentation. So a very good C++ library. Um, there are a lot of shortcomings for certain things that I assume will be there and then I have to code myself or something, which is kind of annoying, but it is great. Like it's got most of the basics of HTML and CSS in there, which is really cool. So uh, that's how I'm doing that. And then, and that's also how we're doing the UI in the game as well. So yeah. Um, when we queue this request, so this goes to the curl thread and it basically goes ahead and like hits this endpoint. And if we go to Postman, we can actually hit this endpoint so we can see what happens. So if I launch this real quickly. So I've got a bunch of stuff saved over here. Um, and these are basically all the endpoints available to me. Available. I can't talk today. <laughs> So uh, this returns the latest version. Um, and so if we hit this endpoint, nope, I have it set to localhost. So if we hit the actual endpoint at prod, um, see this is like launcher should update and it passes in 000. So if we send this, uh, it returns JSON should update true. But if we go to the current version of the launcher, which I believe is, I just have it hard coded in here. I'm gonna have to fix that eventually to pull it from a configuration file or something. If we say 030, which is the most up-to-date launcher, it says should update is false. So we sort of pass that. The server checks to see if it has any like newer versions by looking at my private GitHub repo and the releases and everything. And that basically just lets us know. Um, you can also do launcher latest version. So if we were to do that and I replace all that, this goes ahead and it sends us version 030. So this is useful if I ever need to do stuff for that, for whatever reason. Um, MBW, GNL, how's it going? Good to see you. And then we've also got other things like um, this gives us the hash for the latest installation so that when we install it, uh, we can compare the hash. It's a SHA-256. Don't actually have that implemented yet. We could do that in this stream if we want to. Um, so if I were to hit that, then we should get oh whoops i gotta go to this one if we were to hit that uh we get a hash back so that's great so that way we can do like a checksum make sure nothing got corrupted in the installation if this is bad then we know that there's something wrong and we can just notify the user um and there's just a bunch of other endpoints like this uh and then there's of course the install endpoint which basically just uh sends back either binary or a zip file or whatever um, and that's how we actually install files. Um, so yeah, that's what happens when we hit this endpoint. So we basically go ahead and we do the same thing here. We queue up that request and we say, once that request comes back, go to the handle launcher update check. This gives us the JSON. We can see if it's valid JSON. Then we check and see if it contains that should update field that I said, um, which it should, but it, just in case it doesn't, we can do something like this. And then we say should update equals that. And then we go ahead and swap out our Boolean variable so we can notify the user that there is an update available for the launcher. So how does this all work uh, once it all gets connected together? Basically, if I go into here and let's say I add a new release, which I can do at any time, and this will automatically come to you guys. I basically format it in such a way where I say like crumble launcher dot, and then I say like 0.4.0, .0. say we were releasing that, or let's do 3.1 since that's most likely the next release. Then I go ahead and I create a tag with that uh, crumble launcher dot 0.3.1, create a new tag. Um, I would write my release notes here, which I'm automatically going to pull as well eventually. Uh, I'll mark it as a pre-release, not technically necessary. Um, and then I would attach any binaries here. And so then I would say publish. This goes ahead and publishes it. Now we've got a new version of the launcher. So if I go ahead and run this executable, we get a notification. 
and it says there's an update available and it says there's an update avail available because it's going ahead and like uh looking up that new release and github gives us a way to get the latest release or just look through the releases and i sort of parse through all that information and i'm like oh hey look at that there's like a newer version than the one that this binary executable currently has uh, but if I go ahead and I change this to say like, oh, we're actually on 3.1, this I need to automate, <laughs> as Voxworks is showing there. Uh, this, because this is like very error prone, and if I forget one of these steps, then it's not good. Uh, won't update. So then it just thinks that it's the newest version, right? So we get just nothing because it thinks we're already up to date. So that's kind of how we go through that. Uh, once we click on this notification too, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and hit the install endpoint. Uh, install these files to wherever your current executable directory is. It's going to rewrite the names of all the files. So like we can actually see what happens. Actually, let's do this. We'll delete that release because it doesn't actually have any files. So if we were to hit that, it wouldn't really do anything. <laughs> Uh, it would just show an error here when we tried to install it, which we can test too, I guess. But if we go ahead and let's go into here. So this is where we have everything, right? This is where we're executing from. If we change our version to like 020, it's going to think there's an update available and it's going to go and try and install that version that I was just using. Whoops. And so let's open up this. Not this one. This one. So if we open up this, what you'll see happens, um, and it might happen too fast for us to like catch all of it. So if I click this, it's gonna go ahead and install that update. So it says we're updating the launcher. Uh, you can see here, we just got this updated launcher, which contained all the new files. And then it happened too fast for us to see this, but it renamed all of the old files to new underscore. So it renamed all these to like new underscore engine core.dll. Then it went ahead and launched the, it copied all the files over here so all of these are the new files that we just downloaded copied those uh then it launched this executable and then when this executable launched it saw that there was new files there so it deleted all those and now we're running on the latest version <laughs> so uh yeah it's it's a lot and it happens really fast so you don't even really notice that it's going on when it does go on um but yeah, that's basically how it works. Uh, let me know if that made sense or not. Uh, we basically just replaced some files, renamed some files, launched the executable again, and it all just works out, which is nice. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this stuff though, because I just want to make sure I'm using the actual thing here. So we'll switch that back to 030. Yeah, um, and that's how you create a self-updating launcher. So yeah. true the fact that you can't see it happening is a good thing you don't want to be waiting for a long time while all that's happening you do want it to be like instantaneous and another thing too is like i'm wondering if i should even pop up the notification for launcher updates or if i should just run this automatically and if i detect that there's an update available just do all that for them um before even starting the launcher i may do that in the future who knows we'll see but yeah so that's the basics of how the launcher works if we hit play game here uh, it actually goes ahead and launches the game and what it's doing there is it basically goes and uh, goes through this config file right sees that we have one installed version we see the preferred version these versions match right uh, so it goes to this path it checks to see if we have either minecraft.exe because that's what i called it before so this is like the old latest release or crumble.exe um and so it launches either one if it sees those yep minecraft does it automatically olympus doesn't i honestly sometimes find the auto update annoying yeah that's what i figured so i was like you know there's no reason to auto update it you know i don't know maybe we'll switch it up in the future but for now this works fine um so what it does is it finds all this stuff then it just launches this executable which if we launch it ourselves does the same thing um one thing i can do though is if i am launching from the launcher I can launch with command line arguments so what I plan to do is like add an argument that you can launch the game you know with a username and that'll then be like oh you're now playing in multiplayer like you have an identity associated with you so we can do stuff like that too um, we may make it a little bit more complex but you know that works 
Uh, let's see what happens too. So like if I delete this, and then it's going to detect that. Maybe it does. I don't know if it does detect. Well, it's just going to detect that's corrupted. So then if I hit play game, um, it just says no game installed. No game was found on your computer. This could be because launch or config.json is corrupted. And I just have like a little message there and stuff. Um, how's it going, Sam? So basically, if it gets corrupted for whatever reason, I just let you know. Uh, that's why I'm kind of thinking I should probably just scrub through the files myself because then I can just look through and be like, oh, there's no folders here. Like they don't have anything installed. Um, because right now, if I just go ahead and do this, then I'm going to like trigger the update, right? So I say I can't find any installed games because now the config is messed up. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sam, I only sent auth token from launcher to the game. Sam, you only sent auth token from launcher to the game. Can you clarify what you mean by that? But yeah, so then if we go and like hit that, it's going to go ahead and install that version and we get this new version in here and we have all of our stuff, which is good. And this is messed up. I thought this was better. So, <laughs> gotta fix that. Which we will do. Okay, cool. So, we can fix that at another time. I think I want to fix some of the bugs in the game right now. Because it's not working properly. And then we'll... I'll kind of circle back and finish this stuff up. So... That's the launcher. If you guys have any questions or want me to go into details about how any of the other parts work, let me know. And I can sort of uh, go into more details about that stuff. But that's the basics of how it all works and stuff. Um, I think what we're going to do, though, is there's a lot of bugs in the game itself that still need to be fixed. And I think that's what we're going to work on. So let's go into here and start fixing those up. I'll show you guys the bugs and then we can go through and just start fixing them. They're pretty simple stuff. I just was changing a lot of things as I was refactoring and put a bunch of to-dos. I just wanted to get it like working as I refactored it. Um, and there's a lot of warnings and stuff too. So we might take a look at some of those and start fixing them because it's not good to have a uh, crap ton of warnings. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Sam, launcher will authenticate player from his login and create session token that is passed to the game as argument. And when game is connecting to the server, it sends the session token to authenticate on the server, which, if it's correct, sends him username and other important data. Yes. Uh, I don't have any of that stuff set up right now, Sam. Um, I don't know. Maybe you can talk to me about offline about that. Like what you're trying to get at here. Cause I'm not like, I, I will be doing that eventually. Um, for now though, it, I don't have any sort of auth authentication going on other than just SSL with curl. So yeah. Oh, you're saying how you did it for your game. Okay. Okay. I got you. That's cool. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> but that makes sense. Um, still compiling over here. We're just about there. The way this works is it basically just um, this server acts as a middleman and then it just sort of forwards data back and forth. Uh, so like you hit the server, server hits my repository and then sends the data back. Eventually I'll authenticate and stuff from within the server and we'll get that stuff set up. Okay, this first of all <laughs> we need to fix. Uh, why is the text so big here? It's because I was messing around and I finally figured out how to make the uh, font size consistent across different screen resolutions uh, before I wasn't sure how to do that but I figured out you use something called DP uh, which if we look here yeah we use this measurement called DP which are these two things here which stands for device pixels I think it's it's like DPI sort of and so basically if you have a 1280 by 720 screen resolution this will act like a minus 24 point font. Like if you've ever used Microsoft Word or whatever, uh, or I guess wherever we have the fonts and stuff. Um, before I was using font and pixels, which is not good. So if we go into the main menu, which is what's happening there. Yeah, you can see I'm using pixels everywhere. Not good. Uh, we will fix this. That way it is. Uh, Nidal, it's like the percentage of the page. Exactly. It's kind of like the percentage of the page, but it's a little bit different because... 
percentage doesn't yield the correct result too when you go from different resolutions um it, it doesn't quite work right i like it's really hard to make funk a consistent size across all device resolutions and this is basically just the way that you do that uh and css if you've ever used pixels px it's basically the same thing as this dp i guess if you've used android studio it's it's like that dp so same thing um let's go ahead and launch that again or is it still launched it is still launched cool so we've got this launched let's move this over here this over here close that out so this is the main menu um let me close that out and that stuff we'll fix other stuff later on okay so then if we go i'm gonna open up index yeah this thing okay so we've got that we have that now we can look so this is inside of the something over here <laughs> it's inside here okay yeah so we have this data for for world and saved worlds um and this is using world info title so let's go into the css and we'll go to world info title which is going to be somewhere here i think yeah here we go world info and title cool so i was using em before not a good measurement if we change that dp super small um i think 13 is like <laughs> my default size for p tags let's go because what am i using this for if i'm just using this for this i might just change this to like uh let's go here and we'll just change this to an h1 so that font sizes are consistent yeah that's still a little too small though okay so let's go ahead and we'll make this like 30 dp that looks pretty good yeah I think that looks pretty good okay um let's go ahead and fix this stuff too I think it should be centered possibly maybe uh world info so that's this thing if we just go here yeah so <laughs> I guess this is what we're gonna be doing guys it's just a lot of uh yeah there we go that looks better uh CSS modification so hopefully <laughs> this isn't boring if it is let me know and we can like do something more interesting but um we'll be working on this and then we'll be fixing up some other stuff too as well um these buttons are not centered too centering text on buttons is the most annoying thing ever if you've ever worked with html and css it's just so annoying okay let's change this to dp it's going to be bigger um on my screen dp is about half of it's about twice as big as a pixel so if we just change this to 190 over 2 which is like uh 95 we'll see that that's the same size as it was before yeah so if we do then like 190 pixels should be the same and it is cool so yeah 95 dp if we just divide by two it's the same stuff as what i originally intended so we can just sort of do that as a quick measurement and it should work fine for most stuff most stuff sometimes it doesn't work fine which that's when it gets annoying and you're sitting there modifying stuff for so much time uh i'm gonna remove that before i was trying to like change stuff if you had a smaller screen resolution like manually adjust everything and it was super annoying i hated it so this new technique works very good for different screen resolutions and it's way easier um you'll see i also do use percentage when applicable usually when you're doing like css you use percentages for things like uh, actual elements and then you use uh, like DP, EM, whatever for font sizes and stuff. Um, unless you want like a specific size for something like I do for these images, which is when I do that. But yeah. Langlers, can you use CSS libraries that require JavaScript, something like Bootstrap? No. Uh, it doesn't have enough support to do that. Um, it supports a lot of CSS, but it doesn't support everything. And also the pixels behave differently than they do in actual CSS. So it's unfortunate you can't use stuff like that um it also doesn't have javascript support too so that would break but you can mimic a lot of it and i've created some helper things like you'll notice i have they support flexbox which is really cool so i've got like flex row flex column um and i use that to sort of uh adjust the way things work so you'll notice in here somewhere uh i think i'm using flex row flex yeah here we go 
So like for this bottom space right here to make sure that these buttons all sort of line up properly, I have this flex row, flex row, and then that makes sure that these kind of like get weighted evenly and I can sort of mess around with that, which is really cool. So uh, it's a very cool library. Yep. Um, and you see, you usually like use <laughs> Bootstrap because it helps making my websites prettier. Yeah, I do as well. And I probably will use that for the actual landing page once I get around to that. Let me take that back. I definitely will use Bootstrap once I go to create the actual landing page because it is quite annoying to try and like hand roll your own stuff. But for the most part, you can get this stuff working. Let's remove this too. Okay, so let's go back to the main menu. Make sure this stuff is all good with DP instead. So this is the title screen stuff. If we go, this is the menu buttons. Okay, so like stuff here, change that to DP. That's adjusting the padding a little bit. We'll do 2.5 uh, font size, 55 DP. It's going to be big. So what's half of 55, 22.5. That's better. Cool. Um, <laughs> this line height 100% probably isn't doing anything. Let's change that to 25 DP and see if that fixes it. Nope. Because usually when you want to center text on a button, what you'll do is you set the line height to the same thing. And usually it works. Usually. I think what we have to do is like set a specific height for the button up here. So like if we said height is uh, 55 DP, uh, maybe like 50, 40, yeah. And then if we go and do line height as 40 here, there we go, that's centered. Okay, yeah. So usually this is why it's really annoying doing like centering stuff vertically because you have to know the height, which isn't good most of the time, but usually you can get away with it. This should look good on like different resolutions. And so we can basically just say the height is 40, um, line height is 40, and now text is centered, which is nice. That's what we wanted, right? Um, took me way too long to figure all that crap out, <laughs> okay? But I eventually got there in the end. Okay, let's fix the rest of this stuff because it looks like that was it for that. Um, so we can do the same thing for these buttons. Um, you can see I was doing something similar before where it wasn't really the right thing. Let's change that to 5 DP. That's weird. Okay, that's because I removed the padding. 5 DP. Huh, that looks the same. Cool. Um, oh, that's not actually affecting anything. This is another oddity of RML. Like, if you set font sizes on a parent element, it doesn't actually get inherited by a child element, which is annoying. But yeah. Uh, Sam, you missed the beginning of the stream. Did you say how you are uploading the game data to the launcher API? Are you doing it still manually or are you implemented some automatic clever function? No automatic clever function. I just upload a new release to my GitHub and then it just automatically like detects that and stuff. So, I mean, it is automa automatized, automized. I don't know. It is automized to some point automated. That makes more sense. It is automated to some point, uh, but not completely i may eventually like add continuous integration so that when i build stuff here um if the build succeeds it'll automatically create a release and then tag that release appropriately and then it'll all be completely automatic uh, but for now i just manually upload a release and i kind of like that because sometimes you don't want to push stuff so maybe when i like merge into master that can push out a new release or whatever but i don't know for now that's how it works um, okay, so these buttons are still broken. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll say height of this guy is like uh, 25 DP. That's going to be too small. 50. That's way too big. 30. Nope, not just right. 40. <laughs> okay, I guess 40 is the magic number, guys. Okay, so we'll do 40 there. And then we can say hashtag main menu button P. I also have to like uh, get more consistent. I use... IDs and classes kind of interchangeably. Uh, I need to add a consistent metrics that I'm using the same stuff. I'll eventually get there. Uh, we'll do line height down here, 40 DP. And now we got centered text, should be centered. Kind of looks weird. Font size, 25 DP. 
Did I actually change anything? I did. Wow, I just like picked the exact same font size. Cool. Uh, Sam, yeah, I will upload to Steam only on specific branch on GitHub with CI. You can define that in the config file. Nice. Yeah, I might do the same thing then, like where I have like a upload release like thing branch or whatever, where that will automatically get uploaded as a release. That's a good idea. Thank you. So yeah, um, in the future, for now, I don't want to set up continuous integration. So, you know, it is what it is. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, let's see if we need anything else. This is also another interesting thing. If you're familiar with CSS, HTML, you don't have these things called decorators, but in RML, you kind of have to do this for different stuff. So I created this thing called a box shadow, which is, uh, you might not be able to see it very subtly. There is a shadow there. If we change this to red, now you can see it. So it's amazing. It really does make a difference too. Like it, you might not be able to see it over stream, but it really does make a difference. Um, and this is something that I had to add code for myself so I can actually modify how the shadows work and everything. Right now, it's literally just like a box and I just add like vertices, four vertices, and then I just fade between the two. Um, I might make it more sophisticated in the future, but that's it for now. Uh, so we got that. And then this repeat image is something else that I did where like it does a tiled image. I set the size I want to use, which I guess we should use DP here as well. Um, I don't think that's going to change anything because my code isn't taking DP versus pixels into account. I am going to have to change that so that we actually do use the pixel measurement appropriately. Why don't we take a look at that real quick? So, because this is actually a good thing. Um, I changed this from pixels to DP. It did nothing. If I change this to no units, it still does nothing. No, it did do something. Um, there's a background back there that you can just barely see. Let's uh, do we have uh let's see. Oh, it's because of this. If we change this or maybe change that to one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. There we go. So this is that background image that we're looking at. Um, if we change this to pixels, yeah, you'll notice that doesn't change the measurement. So let's fix that. Um, and the way we can fix it is if we go back into our code, I have something called box shadow decorator dot CPP and we can go into here and we can actually fix this manually. Um, so you can see, I get the opacity, I get offset width, height of the element and somewhere up here. Yeah. Okay. Right here. So this is where I set the shadow width and the shadow height, which is exactly what those values were in the CSS. And when I get those values, I get them right here. Yes. So I get like this length percent thing, right? Um, and then we can get it right here. Okay. So this is where it actually happens. We say get property shadow width ID. I wonder if we can do, I I'm not familiar with this. So this is learning for me. So if we say shadow width prop, uh, let's see what we can do. <laughs> Cause I'm not quite sure if we can get like, uh, So we got inches, we have length, number, number length percent. Yeah, I'm wondering what all these are for. So the way I get it is you can see, I just call this get. I wonder if I can call get and then say like, um, say like uh, absolute length. No, that's not going to work. Okay, let's look at the documentation because I have no idea how this actually works. Um, so if we go into here, into the RML UI docs, which is here, we can go to C++. Uh, I've been through these docs several times, which is why I kind of know where the stuff is. <laughs> uh, let's go down to where is this? It's like decorators, decorators, decorators. Right there, decorators. Cool. So this is what we're using follow these docs. And, uh, that's how I eventually got to where I am at now. Um, let's get to, okay. So decorator instancer is this thing and decorator properties. Okay. Registering an instancer. Okay. Hmm. Actually let's go back. Let's go to properties instead. Cause that is what this is getting. 
properties properties <laughs> where are the properties i think it's in the css so let's go to our css no maybe it's in here properties properties no okay maybe it is in here maybe i missed it let's see we've got oh style sheets and properties <laughs> i'm blind okay so yeah we've got it here man i should just start using Control f because i always forget where this stuff is okay so we've got querying properties we can get the property that's what we're doing now can we the first two non-templated version blah 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 uh, structure is defined here below as a subset of the class listing some of its useful Okay, yeah, so we've got this unit thing. How do we use that unit thing? Each property stores the unit of its value in the value itself as a variant type, which is a structure capable of multiple types. To retrieve the value from a variant, use the get function on the property variant itself. The type should request the value as depends on the properties using it. For mouse string types, keyword values should be requested as int types. Okay, number, px, em, and percent values should be requested as float types. The exact meaning of the value depends on the unit. Okay, so that makes me think it should automatically convert for me. Hmm. Does it have something where I can like check what the type is? <laughs> okay, yeah, so we've got this unit thing. Here, let's see if we can do that. Okay, so instead of doing this, we'll continue to use that as float. And let's say shadow width prop. You think, I think you just need to pass the enum into the template arg. Yeah, that's why I tried there and it was throwing an error. I think we can check the unit here. Let's do this. G logger info um, unit percent s and then i use this library called magic enum super awesome and it converts enum stuff to a c string so we can actually check what the name is okay so this should give us units let's check and see what that says in the logs sam check because you use the local variable and you cannot do that oh that's true <laughs> let me try that again in a minute well this is weird too it's saying unit is pixel is that just because it's looking at? And then we get unit is null. Oh, you know what it is. I think it's because I don't have it defined as something I can accept. So I say add parser length. And if we look at the docs again, let's go over here and look at... Um, C++ or maybe well yeah I think this is right style sheets and properties okay I think he has something somewhere which says what a length means uh, man these docs are great but it's so hard to find stuff when I just want to reference something uh, let's see Hmm. I think it is going to be in here. Nah. Okay, well here, yeah, we get this thing, which is like add parser. So we can say keyword, we can say string. Um, does he say what a length is? Okay, number stores values as number. Length stores them as PX, EM, and related. Okay, yeah, so that makes me think that DP would be included in that length. So that length should be fine. Let's let's try out what you're saying, Sam, real quick. Let's see if that works, because it's weird that it's showing that the property is null. Uh, that doesn't make quite sense, but uh, let's see. So that would be in here unit so rml property unit let's do a property rml property unit uh dp yeah it doesn't like that either 
Yep. Because, I, I mean, and that kind of makes sense to me, too, because what he's saying is it should get converted automatically. Because he's saying to do, like, up here. Somewhere down here, maybe. Yeah, it stores it as a variant. It stores it as multitude types. If you call get with the wrong type, you can do your best to convert it. Um... Okay, yeah, see, it says it should be requested as float types. The exact meaning of the value depends on the unit. So that makes me think that it should be doing all that automatically, but for some reason, I don't think it's parsing it correctly because it says shadow with prop unit dot data. When we do this, and let's just double check this real quick. This is definitely DP, okay? Uh, can we print out the name of the prop too? Logger info prop percent s shadow with prop name or something can we do that no get no we cannot what happens if we print it as a string let's do that <laughs> not to that c plus plus okay okay let's try that let's see what happens because i am interested sc woods estimated release date if you dare <laughs> Uh, no release date in sight as for a while. <laughs> okay, so this just converts it to a string and it says 10 px 10 null 9 null. Is that what I have written in here? Oh, I'm launching the wrong thing. <laughs> Maybe that's why we're not seeing the proper thing. Let's go back into... Let's set this as our startup project since this is what we're working on. Okay, maybe now we'll see it actually pop up correctly. <laughs> okay, fix that. Play game. Okay, there we go. So now we have 8px and 0 null. If we're looking here, this is... Okay, so we should be seeing 0 and 25. Do we see that anywhere? No, I do not. We get zero and null, and then we get eight pixels. Maybe it is converting. If I change this to 15, does that change? No, we're still getting zero, null, eight px. I'm wondering where it's getting that from. Oh, oh, it's just printing out the width. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe I should print out the height. <laughs> that would be helpful. Let's do the height instead. Uh, so let's do height and height. Okay. Maybe that's why we were getting the wrong stuff. Okay. There we go. Now we're getting 15 null. Okay, so that makes sense. That's what we've got here and if we change this to 25 we get 25 and we get null okay it looks like he just doesn't support dp for unit huh saw it change in the game yeah it does change in the game and that's fine but what i'm saying is like this isn't actually correct because even though it looks correct right now it's it's sizing it in pixels which isn't what i want i want it to be sized in actual dp because if you go to a lower resolution this gets bigger which isn't actually great Star Citizen is on year 10 of development with no end in sight. Yeah, I feel like that's what this is going to become. But hey, that can be good, right? I don't know. Yeah, because we're definitely still getting 25. And it, it doesn't know what the unit is, which is really annoying. I wish... I wish we could fix that. Let's go back to this guy. Because this is where we create parser properties or whatever. Okay, defining custom value parsers. Parse value is the meat of the parser. This will be called whenever the parser is required to parse a raw string into a useful value. We use property, property of the value to be parsed, the raw string, 15px. Okay, cool, so let's do this. We will create our own custom parser and we'll use this to convert to the appropriate units. So, yeah, 
Absolutely, game dev does take time. <laughs> I appreciate it. Let me know, guys, too. If this is boring to you and like you really don't want to see this, please say something in the chat because I don't want to be doing something that's like not interesting to anybody. I find this stuff interesting, but I don't know about you guys. So we'll write a custom parser real quick, which should parse out like 15 DP, and then that should convert it to pixels for us. Yeah, we'll convert it to pixels because that is what my final unit of measurement should be. So if we go, uh, if you want to define more complicated parsers, you can do so by registering a custom property parser before you register your custom properties. The base class for all property parsers is this. So what this sounds like is we need to go into our engine core, uh, which is here. Okay. And then we need to go into GUI. And what we're going to do is create a new folder here. And we'll call this uh, parsers. Okay. And then we'll go into here and we will create a new item. And this is going to be unit dp parser dot h. Okay. And we'll say hash if not define unit dp parser h hash define that hash end if. Uh, Voxerus, by the way, when I run the game, I see a skybox and some block highlights. All Oh, all I see is a skybox and some block highlights. Huh. That definitely should not be happening. <laughs> it sounds like the rendering isn't getting submitted. I'll have to look into that. Uh, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Can you send me the specs of your computer and stuff? DM me in Discord and then I'll have to check that out and everything. Yep. SE Woods, we're here for the ride. Just make sure to put in some advertisement breaks from time to time. I have still not seen any. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I Advertisement breaks probably don't get me that much money, so I really don't care about that stuff. But yeah, <laughs> sure. Thanks, uh, VoxRefs. And if you guys want to see advertisement breaks, let me know and I can add them. <laughs> Maybe if I figure it out. Uh, okay, this is in actually Engine Core. And what we're going to do is... It uh, sounds like we got to extend this base class RML property parser. So we're going to go ahead and say like class unit DP parser extends RML uh, basic parser, I think is what it was called. Let's go ahead and hash include RML UI slash core slash parser. No, what was that called? Property parser. Ah, okay slash do we have something else now nah, core property parser there we go okay property parser and then we can go ahead and say uh property parser okay and we'll say public and we'll say private uh does this work why is it not happy hash and if expected a declaration It's not picking this stuff up, which is kind of interesting. Is my IntelliSense just broken? <laughs> Usually it highlights this stuff. I'm like waiting for it to start highlighting stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's do RML. Yeah, it's not picking that up. Property parser. Why are you not picking that up? RML. Nope, still not doing anything. Weird. Uh, not do that. Let's do engine core slash core. Okay. <laughs> now it's working. Yeah, I, I guess Visual Studio is just being very slow for me today. That was weird. Uh, Voxrus, it's shader compilation failures. Kitty Cat on Discord is getting the same errors. Ah, okay. Thank you. Um, I'll have to look into that because Kitty Cat mentioned this a long time ago and I still haven't fixed that, but hopefully we'll get around to it. Um, if you could send me the exact errors and stuff too, that'll be good. And I'll take a look at that after the stream and I might sync up with you guys and like do it back and forth. If you're still awake, I know it's getting dark over by you guys. I have no idea what time it is, but yeah. Um, okay. So we get this virtual method. Let's go ahead and copy that. Uh, so we do this. Uh, we really don't need that. Okay. Called to parse an RCSS declaration. Okay, so parameter map. So we get the property, we get the value, we get parameters. And let's go ahead and not mark that as that. We'll mark it as override. Do I do that over here? 
can't remember. I think I marked that here. No, I do not. Okay, so I guess I did that in the right place. C++ uh, order of keywords. Can't remember that. <laughs> Boxer, it's 8.15, but who on earth sleeps this early? <laughs> okay, cool. I had no idea what time it was by you guys. I just know that like as it gets towards midday for me, it gets dark for you guys. So that's good to know. <laughs> Um, okay, so we've got this. Let's go ahead and actually implement this using Go into here GUI. Uh, let's get rid of this thing too because I'm not actually in there new folder uh, Parsers So this is just a really cool library too I just want to say because like the fact that you can extend it like this if there's something that doesn't work You can just sort of add your own code here is just really nice Um and very well done library so happy with it sam found it which is awesome so thank you sam for finding this <laughs> okay let's go ahead we'll say hash include engine core slash gui slash parsers slash unit dp parser okay we got that now we can go ahead we can implement this uh, let's actually grab that get rid of that we'll go ahead and do that we can get rid of the override and we can get rid of the virtual and then we can go ahead and specify that and yep we're good we are good there we go we're overriding that function now but why use a library when you can write <laughs> custom everything and yes i already know the answer yeah uh that i i had that same question when i was thinking about doing json the other day i was like should i write my own parser I was just like, I really don't feel like writing a JSON parser. There's, yeah, especially with HTML and CSS, man, just, I'm checking out of the door. Like there is so much garbage with HTML, CSS to handle. There's no way I'm writing a parser for that garbage. <laughs> you got to like spend decades. Uh, I've read some funny articles from people who work on like Firefox and stuff. But yeah, Implody, NIH, everything is a way to make progress. NIH, what's NIH? Acronym. I don't know what this is. National Institutes of Health. I'm guessing that's not what you're talking about. So you can uh, clarify that for me and I'll see what you mean. But good to see you too, Implody. Uh, looks like this is your first chat. Not invented here, aka creating your. Okay, yep, gotcha. <laughs> see, it's really hard too to just. It's just super hard to like figure out do I want to implement this myself or not? And sometimes you got to make that call and be like, okay. I got to make progress. Uh, just do this. But yeah. And yeah, good to see you too. Everything like completely everything. Yeah, let's not do that for everything. Uh, there comes a point when you're like, I got to just use a library because there's no way I'm going to support this. Yep. Essie Woods, are you still VR enthusiast after the game you played? Yes. I thought I put in like 30 hours into that game. It turns out I've only put in 10 hours so far. <laughs> uh, but it's still a super fun game and I am enjoying it a lot. Yep. Uh, Sam check. Look at property parser number in RML. It looks like DP is parsing there. It is. Thank you, Sam. If they're parsing it, I wonder why it's not working right. Yep, they definitely got DP there. Hmm. Yep, so they basically just parse out the number. Then they parse out the string, like the units. Looks like it should work. I mean, it just parses out that unit and everything. Weird. Uh, Voxriffs, stuff like JSON parsers is uninteresting, but stuff like UI, I find fun to figure out new ways of doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lol guy, I was banned from Discord, but the support team lifted my ban today. Okay. Well, cool. Yeah. I don't know if it's, I don't think we ban people. I think we might just like mute for a certain amount of time, depending on behavior and stuff. But yeah, Sam, I looked at where it was computing the value and it looks okay. It's weird that it's not getting that too. Yeah. Which discord? Cause <laughs> that's what I was wondering too. Uh, okay. Let's see if we're hit. Well, I don't want to put a breakpoint in here because we're going to be hitting this a lot. 
but it's definitely not hitting it for this decorator. Is there a way I can see how this is called and stuff? Because I have a feeling it's just not getting called for like decorators for whatever reason. Because we have it right there. Hmm. Breakpoint for only the first hit. Uh, it's going to be hit a lot as what I'm guessing because I have a lot of DP values in there. So I don't want to have to go through that. Uh, let's see. What are we... So this is property parser. And let's go back into here. This is definitely, so we're saying get property here, but it's not parsing it correctly. See, this is why this library is kind of annoying sometimes because you get into situations like this. If it was parsing it properly, I would definitely expect this unit to be DP, which we've got right, oh, or length, I guess, but it's not even getting that length. Wait, no, DP is up here. Yeah, so I would expect it to be DP. It says fetch is float, which is what I'm doing. Hmm. Really weird. Length percent has default p picks. I I don't like if it's converting it to pixels and stuff. That's fine. But what I'm saying is like um, I am logging it out right here, the unit. If we just run this again, comment this out. If we just run this again, uh, uh, let's click into here. Yeah, you can see right here, it's saying property eight unit pixels. So that's some other thing, but then property 25 unit is null. That's this, like, I don't see what else could be. Cause if I change this to pixel, okay. So that's pixel now, 25 PX. Change it back to DP. Null. Okay, so it's it's definitely not parsing it properly. Why it's not parsing it properly, I am unsure. Oh, you're saying like maybe length percent? I've got length and length percent here. String keyword. Oh, let's try number. <laughs> Maybe I'm just being really stupid and I just didn't add number here. If this is it, I'm going to be annoyed at myself because we spent a long time on this and it could have been a very easy fix. Okay, what do we get? Nope, 25 is still null. Definitely still null. Default styles here. Thank you for that link. Fox source. Yeah, I read in the, uh, that comment in the code saying that it's based on pixels per inch, so that makes more sense now. Yeah. There's probably a spec in the device description for monitors or something. Um, well, I actually set up like that scaling, how it like scales that and stuff, but yeah. Oh, that's the name of the file. Okay, thank you. Sorry. I was like, that's not working. Default style sheet parsers.cpp. Did I spell that wrong? Default style sheet parsers. Uh, of course, Visual Studio is not happy. Where is this? Default style sheet parsers.cpp. Uh, Visual Studio isn't finding this for me. 
let's just go into, I guess, where this is. Probably gonna be in here. Wait a second. Where do I set this up? I set this up up here. Okay. We call it register property. Let's go into here. Default value. All that stuff. Uh, wait a second. Let's go back because it's add parser. Let's do that. String parser name. New parser. Self okay. Get parser. Let's go into here. Parser name. Iterator. Parsers dot find. Where's parsers? Parser map. Okay. Do they have it up here? No. Source core style sheet specification. Oh, style sheet specification. There we go. Visual Studio is able to find that. Thank you. Okay, number length, length percent. Uh, it doesn't look like. They have DP. What is number? That's just that. What is length? Yeah, length is PX, DP, PPI unit, EM, REM, VW, VH, all that stuff. So length should be fine. And what is length percent? Length or percent? Is it because I have two things on here maybe? I was under the assumption that I could add multiple parsers because that's what he made it sound like in the docs. Let's go ahead and comment this out. Comment that out. See what happens now. I mean, an add parser too. That doesn't sound like a destructive kind of thing. It sounds like it should work. Still null. Uh, what happens if I use VW or VH, which are also supposedly supported? Uh, still null. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. Okay, here, VW, still null, PX, pixels, percent. Uh, it doesn't like that because we don't have that supported. This is uh, really weird. The log, it, I mean, it's showing pixels when I change it to pixels. <laughs> it's showing null there. We can log out like the enum value too. I'll do that real quick, but I... Magic Enum has not failed me before. I don't expect it to start now. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead. Logger info, unit enum value, shadow height prop unit, which is just, if we look at this, it's just a property unit. Okay, so that's just a number. Try breakpoint, where's the property? Oh, that's probably a good idea too. We'll do breakpoint right there. Um, let's go ahead. Okay, so we're in here. Shadow height prop. Unit is PX. Do I have it defined as PX? I have it defined as VH here. Uh, maybe this is the other one. Okay, let's go back. We did not hit it again. Okay, let's change it real quick. DP. Uh, shadow height prop. Oh, okay, wait, now we're getting unit is VH. Okay, maybe I was just logging it wrong. <laughs> but now it's DP, so that's weird that it's... Uh... Okay, and then it's getting PX. Okay, wait, now we're getting this. DP. Okay, so <laughs> did we just do all this for no reason? One second. Okay, if we did, then that's going to be annoying too. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll say G logger info shadow height. Okay, let's check it out. <laughs> the logging was wrong all along. I guess so. Um, let's see if it is calculating it because you need to calculate it yourself. Look at co compute property. Oh. You have to calculate it yourself. So this is what I was missing, was I just have to do this. 
because it doesn't sound like it should do that. I mean, if we look at the docs, what does the doc say? Man, I'm gonna like reach out to this library owner and be like, dude. Okay, first two non-templated blah, blah, blah. Okay, each property stores the units of its values. Okay, values should be requested as float types. The exact meaning of the value depends on the unit. That makes it sound like if I request it as a float, it's gonna be interpreted as the unit and it's gonna change it. Let's log it real quick and see what happens. Which I'm doing right there. Okay. So, okay, we get shadow height is 25 there. Uh, let's move this here. Which is wrong already, because if this is in pixels, it shouldn't be doing that. If we switch to pixels, VW, VH. Yeah, so it's definitely not interpreting it correctly. Let's try that compute property thing. If this is true, I don't get why the documentation does that. It says it will return the you the unit value, and it's right. Hmm. So this compute property thing, which is located in here... Is this just like a static class? Oh, this is just a namespace. Sweet. Okay. So we should be able to just use that. Let's try it out. Um, so if we do RML compute, computed values, uh, compute, what was it? Resolve value. Um, and this is under just RML. Oh, okay. So if we just go resolve value. Okay. And then we pass it shadow width prop base value. Let's go back into here. Um, okay, so length percentage base value of length type equals length. Oh, compute length. This is probably the one I should be using. Okay, let's try that out. Compute length. Yep. Okay, where is this at? Compute length is inside of here. Should be available, I think. Let's include that file just in case. Yeah, resolve only cares about percent. Yep, look at the other functions, but your own version, I think. Uh, hash include slash core slash property, compute property. Is it in computed values? Where is this located? This is located in source, core, compute property, uh, include compute property. Where is this? This is source, core, compute property, dot H. Core, compute, uh, not showing up. I'm guessing this isn't a public interface that he allows us to use. Compute absolute length is the one you think I need to use. Okay, let's try that out. It's still annoying that this isn't documented in that page, which is where I definitely think it should. Yeah, I, I can't. It looks like he's not exposing that to the user. I think that's like an internal uh, internal tool. We can write our own real quickly, though. I mean, let's go ahead. We're going to delete this stuff real quickly. Let's just delete that whole file folder thing. Um, where else is it? Right here. Okay, let's delete that. Uh, we'll create our own. We'll say new item. GUI. Uh, we'll call this converter. Because it looks like he's just not exposing it. Yeah, that's what I'm basically going to do. Hash if not define. Converter. H. Engine core. And then we'll do a uh, I don't know. I'll probably just call this template 
type name from type name to uh, from value or actually I guess we should do a RML property prop and then uh, we will return to okay and then we'll just say like hash include RML UI core uh, property okay and this will be const so then what we can do is we can just say switch from well actually I can't do that I can say uh <laughs> okay so this should be an enum I guess we can't really okay we probably shouldn't template that because it is enums okay instead what we're gonna do is that will return a float and then we'll say uh, RML property or unit yeah property unit from two okay that's what we should do TNT master how's it going good to see you uh, let's switch on from we'll say case uh, RML property unit DP okay and then we'll call like convert to whatever yeah because this is gonna quickly explode <laughs> we definitely this is not good because then we're gonna have another switch which is like all the things for everything so i guess what we could do is we could say like float absolute value equals zero and then what we could do is we could convert this or actually we'll just say like pixel value so we'll convert to pixels and then we'll convert from pixels to whatever they want to convert to for now i'm just going to do like uh so dp is we can say float content scale equals application dot get content scale. Uh, let's go ahead and move this into its own file now because this is getting kind of big. So let's go. To that, copy that, paste it, that hash include uh, engine core slash core. Actually, no, that's slash GUI converter. Okay. And let's do that. We'll have it defined in here. Let's go ahead and just do that. And then let's also go ahead and just say like a namespace RML class property. And for declare that since it is being sent in, is this a class? Okay, it is a class. Cool. So yeah, we'll do that. Okay, cool. So now we have that forward declared. We're good. Um, let's go ahead and say hash include engine core, core application, engine core, core window. Okay, so that's all good. This is the content scale. So what we do is we divide by the content scale to get pixel value. So we can say pixel value equals prop dot get float over pixel value. It's really annoying that this isn't working the way it says it should. I'm quite not quite sure why that is. We'll say switch to case RML property unit pixels return pixel value and then we can do other stuff. Default we'll say uh, unsupported to value okay do the same thing here uh, and I guess that should be a warn warning and this is from okay return zero or actually we'll just return the prop get float Cool, so that's how we'll do this, I guess, since it looks like this is not exposed to us. I'll probably copy his implementation at some other point and stuff. 
for now, we'll just do this. Okay. Shadow height. Shadow height computed. And we will do... Scroll all the way to the top. And let's say include... Uh, GUI converter. Okay. Then we can say converter. What do I call this? Converter. Oh, that's just called converter. Let's call it namespace. And we'll call this convert. Because <laughs> that makes sense, right? Uh, do that, that, and that. Okay. Uh, property is shadow height prop from is RML property unit pixels, which it seems to be giving it to us in unit. Oh wait, no, we want it from it's, uh, okay. No. So we want to convert to pixels. What we're going to use is Oh, I guess we don't even need to pass the from. That's kind of stupid to me. Okay. If we're passing a property, we have from. Okay, we can do that. Do that. Um, prop dot unit. Okay, cool. So that should be good. Okay, that should convert to pixels. Close that out. What's this say? Oh, we just need to dereference that. Cool, we're good. Sweet. Let's see if this works. Nope, build errors. Undefined use of property unit. Ah, oh, crap. We do have to include it. Too bad. Okay. RML UI core property. Okay. I tried to forward declare, couldn't do it. Okay, shadow height, computed is infinity. <laughs> That's not good. Looks like, like we're dividing by zero. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint right there. Um, this is DP. Okay, there we go. So what is, oh, I'm dividing my pixel value. That's stupid. We should be dividing my content scale. And no wonder we're dividing by zero. Okay. Now, is this right? If you look at some other RML computation, they are using multiply. The way I've seen it here, we'll test this in a second, but the way I've noticed it working Okay, so that's working out good. Sweet. Um, like if I go, so this text, we know the text is being computed properly, right? For font size. This is in main menu button P. Uh, let's also, I did remove that. Cool. Um, no, this is in save world title. So this is 30 DP. Oh, wait, I think you're right. If I do 60 pixels, same size. Yeah, you're right. Okay, multiply. Thank you. So let's fix that real quickly. Should be multiplied. Times content scale. Okay, cool. Thank you, Sam. And now we're good. We should be working properly. Finally. <laughs> Man. Not sure why that was... Okay, shadow height is computed to 50. Cool. So now this should work properly if we change it from... Okay, uh, where was that? That was here. Okay, so this is 25 DP. Now if we do pixels, 
it should be smaller, but it's not because I haven't added support for that. Okay, yeah, let's uh, support that real quickly. Um, let's also do data so that we don't get gibberish there. Data, okay. Um, case RML property unit pixels. Pixel value equals prop dot get. Whoops. Dot get float. Okay. Break. Okay, so now we should be good. <laughs> Finally, uh, this took way longer than it should have, but I'm glad I got it out of the way because this is important. I want to have consistency and this gives me consistency. So if we change this to DP, should change the size. Pixels. We're getting the same size. Why are we getting the same size? Yeah, height 8, 8, 25, 25. And then if we switch this to DP. Twenty-five, fifty. Okay, so that's definitely changing it. Wait a second. Am I just not seeing it? Let's do like 50. 50 DP. Okay, so that definitely changes that. Pixels. Changes nothing. Why is that not changing things now? So if we go back into here. Oh, it's because I'm not using it. <laughs> Duh. Uh, let's use this. Instead of this. Okay, now we should be good. Okay, let's do the same thing here. Converter, convert shadow with prop RML property unit pixel. Okay, <laughs> now we should be good. Uh, why doesn't it like this? We need to dereference that. Where were we? Cool. So now if we run this, we should see changes. And it should work properly. And then we can move on with our lives and fix the rest of this stuff very quickly because I think we should be good. Cool. So you can already notice it's bigger there. 50 pixels. If we go DP, it changes sizes. Awesome. <laughs> oh, man. That took way longer. Way longer than it should have. But whatever. It's working now. What was it before? I can't even remember the original value now. Uh, let's go to like 15 DP. That looks good. Okay, now we're using DP everywhere. Nice, congratulations. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> I'm glad we finally got this working. Okay, so uh, we need to do the same thing here too for this repeat image, because I don't think it's supported there either. So let's go ahead and just add that really quickly, which we can do now, just using this thing. Um, if we go to repeat image decorator, what do I call it? It's just in here. Tile decorator, cool. So this is basically just for repeating images. Yeah, let's just uh, do that. And this is the tiled width property. Um, and that should work out. Let's see what's wrong with that in a second. This is the tiled height. Prop. Okay, what's wrong? Oh, we need to include converter. Hash include engine core GUI converter. Okay, and now we're all good on both fronts. Sweet. Langors, you need to add sound effects to stream when you manage to solve something. Yeah. It doesn't happen often enough that I think <laughs> that would be a good idea, though. Future tip. I will do that. Remind me in Discord or something so that we can actually remember to add that next time. Okay, you'll notice these are way bigger now, too. And that's because I have to go to 128 to get the actual value that I was looking for, which is that 128 DP. Okay, cool. And then we'll do the same thing here. If we switch this to DP, uh, this dirt will be twice as big, or at least it should. What if I change it to 128? Oh, that's this dirt for some reason, but not that dirt. <laughs> Uh, the bottom dirt. Okay, bottom dirt is fixed. Uh, what about the top dirt? Yeah, because that's bottom space. Uh, what about top space? Okay, there we go. And then we got to fix this too. DP. And we can go... 
There we go. Now we're good. This should be consistent. Um, also, I don't know if you guys can see this. This tiny little text up here, can you see that? It says no DC. Uh, have you guys ever experienced that? And if so, do, does anyone know why it's even there? Like, I have no idea. It pops up at the top left corner of any OpenGL app that I create. But it's not in any other windows. I assume it stands for no device context, which makes no sense if JillFW is working the way it should. So, just weird. Wondering if anyone's ever seen that. If you have, let me know. And I'd like to know if you've solved it too. Okay, let's make sure the rest of our measurements are correct now. So looking to see if there's any pixels. Okay, this is a pixel thing. Bottom buttons, um, let's do like DP. And we should, yeah, we should do half because that's what we want. 1150, wait, no, 2300. Yeah, 1150, okay, that's right. Cool, so we'll do that. Um, let's see, 70 pixels, this should be 35 DP. I'm just curious which part this is. This isn't affecting affecting anything. 35? 70? Weird. I wonder if this actually affects anything then. Um, oh, it's probably because of this thing. 35? Nope, still doesn't affect anything. Weird. Oh, it's because of the flex here. Duh. That's going to make it so that I can't actually size that stuff. Okay. If we change this to DP, that doesn't change anything either. Weird. I wonder if these styles are even being used. Um, Sam, check. It's just broken NVIDIA settings. You need to reset them or delete the config file. Okay, cool. So it's just my PC. It's not something that should affect everyone because of my code. According to you get fix, uh, the reason why you see these no DC watermarks when using various programs, corrupted control panel settings. Okay, sweet. So that's good to know. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like something that was an issue with my settings. Um, this should be two, 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 two. That's better. Let's go up a notch. Uh, let's go three, two, three, two, three, two. Yeah, just a little bit brighter. Okay, cool. So this is all looking good. Um, do these bottom buttons actually do anything? Dot bottom buttons. I mean, supposedly they should be affecting these things. If we change this to DP. Okay, that does affect that. Uh, and I kind of like that better. Let's go to. Uh, font size is not affecting this though. Yeah, okay, let's see what's bottom buttons button and then do we have these wrapped in p tags we do have them wrapped in p tags so i would assume that would uh modify the size of that text bottom buttons button p Okay. Weird. Let's try and do like a inheritance selector. Nope. Uh, well, since this isn't affecting anything, um, I guess we can just get rid of it. I bet you I'm overriding it somewhere down here and I didn't realize it. Let's see. Nah. Oh, well. I kind of do want to fix it though because... We kind of do need it to be right. Let's see. Bottom buttons. Let's just see if we can get that to work. If we remove the flex, nope. Nope. Um, what if we add like an actual class to it? Let's see if that works. Class equals some class. Let's do that. Nope, nothing. Nothing. Weird. I think it's being overridden. 
somehow, some way. Uh, let's check if we got, so we go dot dot, okay, yeah, so it should just be like whatever's below it could override it, but I don't see anything here. Let's do font size. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to look more into this because I'm not sure why that's not working the way I would expect it to. Uh, let's actually do this. Control slash look into this. Okay, cool. Let's fix the rest of these measurements since we can. So this is safe world. Um, borders good. That's all fine. Okay, that's all good. Yep, we'll just fix this. Um, this is for create new world. So let's go into here. Yep, that's definitely wrong. <laughs> DP. That's good. Let's change this to 7.5 so it's back to what it should be. Uh, change this to DP. Now it's super small. Uh, let's see. We want to do like 25 DP. 23? 22? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, input. Looks alright. Um, yeah, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's do like 18. That's good. Nice. Okay. I think that's about it. So these styles should all be correct now for the most part. So yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Sam, so yeah, maybe try change the color of the text. It's even working. That's a good idea too. It's weird that it wouldn't be. Um, let's do that color red. Yeah, that's working. <laughs> uh, just not font size. Line height. Line height's not working either. Uh, something is overriding it. Let's do it here. We can do this. F8. Uh, we can do this. F8. No. Why is this breaking now? What the heck? So what this should do is it should open stuff, open up the debug window, but for some reason we're reading a null location. Oh, and you know why? It's because I'm in release mode. Um, but I don't think that should matter. At least I hope it doesn't. Uh, RML debugger. Yeah, we initialize it no matter what. Weird. Man, everything is breaking today. <laughs> yep, still broken. Is it, is this? Huh. I'll look into that later. <laughs> it's just not, yeah. Will you upload upload today fixed UI? I would like to try it to the launcher. Um, I have to fix some more stuff in the game. If we actually look at the game, there's more broken stuff that I need to like work out. So I probably won't be uploading just yet, but when I do, it should notify you. Oh, we need to fix that too. <laughs> I, I will let you know. Um, so you can see like we're getting white styles here. We're getting a bunch of warnings here. Um, I need to fix this as well. So there's still a lot of stuff that I got to fix and everything, but I'm basically going to be doing the same process I've done here. Uh, and then once I fix all that, I'll probably upload it maybe a little bit later today. Yep. Anyways, guys, uh, thank you for watching. I think I'm going to end it off like right about here. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and got something out of it, even though we didn't get much done today. Yep. Where's the GitHub for Crumble? Um, so that's the reason I have this launcher. It is private uh, right now. I might, I'll probably be adding, so this is what it is and it's private up here. Um, 
eventually make it public for like Patreons or something, but for now it's gonna remain private. Yep. Um, see you Lemek Lemekis, Lem Lime Keys. That probably makes more sense. And TNT Master Langors. See you guys uh, next week, hopefully around the same time. Thanks for watching though.